Welcome to the Hyundai Queensland State League Highlight Show. Brought to you by Hyundai, Red Rooster and Football Queensland. And our match highlights for Round 13 come to you from Goodwin Park in Brisbane, where the equal competition leaders Olympic FC took on the Queensland Academy of Sport. Olympic were looking for their 10th win of the season. Referee Alan Milliner got play underway on a cool Sunday evening in front of a sizeable crowd expecting a close fought contest. Olympic started the better and had their first chance when CO found Chris Hagel with a good long pass. He crossed to Brad Lacey, but the shot was well wide, not forcing Matt Acton to save. Hagel then had his own chance when QAS defender Zach Anderson played him onside, but Anderson was able to recover and block the shot. A mistake by a QAS defender saw a penalty appeal against a Michael Ryan tackle, which was waved away by referee Milliner. On 22 minutes, Olympic had the clearest chance of the match to date. From a free kick, Hagel whipped the ball towards the head of Brad Lacey, who headed the ball just over the crossbar. QAS retaliated immediately with a good interchange of passes by Josh Bolante and Ko Sataki, which saw the ball fall to Tyler Thurtell. His looping left foot volley was deflected just the wrong side of Matt Ham's post. Josh Bolante then set up third tell after dispossessing Cameron Draper playing it right back. Third tell's shot was blocked well by the incoming Olympic defenders. Olympic then threatened the QAS goal again when the industrious James Meyer found space in the middle of the park and tapped the ball wide to Hagel. Hagel's first time cross found the head of the leaping Alex Panich, who calmly headed the ball back past QAS keeper Matt Acton. A well-constructed build-up, a pinpoint cross and a cool Panich finish giving him his sixth goal of the year. A free kick taken by Andrew Orr caused some consternation in the QAS defence and they were relieved when Brad Lacey flicked his shot wide. Olympic were controlling play with their five-man midfield and some excellent passing between Orr and Co, Co and Hagel, and Hagel and Meyer caused further anxious moments in the QAS penalty area. A fortunate bounce off Ken Dougal enabled Halloran to clear before any damage was done. Just before the break, QAS had a chance to equalise when James Meyer obstructed Tyler Thurtell's path to goal and referee Alan Milliner awarded a free kick. Midfielder Ko Sataki stepped up to take the free kick for the academy, but his shot was easily saved by Matt Ham in the Olympic goal. Half time came with Olympic in control, leading 1-0. The second half started much like the first, both teams creating clear chances in front of goal. Firstly, CO and Meyer set up Andrew Orr, who was only just wide with his shot. QAS then struck back, resulting in Thurtell sending a shot just wide for the QAS. Josh Bolante played Thurtell in again, but once again he was unable to find the target. Sio was in the action again, winning possession and passing to all. From the all cross, Panic went close with a glancing header. The best chance of the game for QAS came in the 58th minute, when Olympic defender Cameron Saint gifted the ball to Ben Halloran. Halloran travelled towards goal but took too long to get his shot away, or get the ball to his unmarked support and when he did it was smothered by the incoming Olympic defenders. The miss proved costly as less than a minute later Olympic doubled their lead. As the QAS defence retreated from James Meyer he took aim and sent a spectacular long range shot past Matt Acton.
the defence retreating towards her own penalty area, and Meyer happily took up the invite to shoot and send the home crowd into raptures. A spectacular strike worthy of all the praise he received around the ground. In the 61st minute, Halloran found space in the midfield and got the ball to Alistair Quinn out wide. Quinn played the ball across the goal, eluding Matt Ham, but the incoming Mitch Bevan was unable to direct the ball into the open goal. Cameron Saint worked well with Alex Panic to set up Brad Lacey, but QAS keeper Matt Acton saved well. The QAS never gave up, and in the 77th minute, winger Alistair Quinn crossed the ball into the danger area. The hard-working Josh Berlante was on hand to score his third goal of the season. Berlante well positioned to put his side back into the contest. Olympic tried to close the game out but were guilty of taking some poor options towards the end of the match, allowing the QAS side to finish the stronger. Okafor was ruled offside here. QAS had a few half chances in the remaining minutes of the game and refused to give up. Berlante had his shot blocked. Olympic held on to their victory, the 10th of the season. And afterwards we briefly spoke to both coaches to get their views. Well, again, uh, a game against uh, a top team and again zero points, um, although I didn't think in the end uh, uh, we did bad. Uh, it is a compliment for our guys that uh, Olympic uh, took this game very seriously and you see that we uh, a little bit. Um, well, we had uh, the advantage of the surprise a little bit uh, the last few weeks, but now um, um, people know that we, uh, we are a, a difficult uh, team to play against. Well, I thought it was a good football game, two, two good sides. Uh, in the end it was evenly matched, but that's what you would expect from two teams up fairly near the top. Uh, maybe we could have put, them, put the game to bed a bit earlier. We had enough opportunities, but uh, credit to them. They're a good young football inside and they never gave up. And uh, they had us on the ropes in the last five, five minutes or so. But I think it was a worthy win and uh, I'm just happy with the three points. And to all the round 13 results. A four goal haul from Luke Morley was enough for the Brisbane Strikers to see off Capricorn Cougars at Perry Park on Saturday night. Five nil winners there. In the other Saturday night clash, FNQ Bulls came from behind to beat Logan United 3-1. Three late goals from Alex Plowman, the returning David Ruiz, and Bulls leading goal scorer Stephen Cater ensured the three points for the home side. Sunshine Coast FC continued their push up the Hyundai Queensland State League ladder with a 3-0 win over fellow finals hopefuls NQ Razorbacks. That was Sunshine Coast's fourth win in succession. With Sunday Miners' disappointing 2009 campaign continued on the weekend, losing 4-1 at home to Redland City Devils. Redlands led by four at half-time and cruised through the second half to record a valuable away win. Olympic FC overcame a determined Queensland Academy of Sport outfit on Sunday, prevailing 2-1 winners on the night. Bundaberg Spirit had the bye in this round. And to the points table at the conclusion of round 13. Brisbane Strikers and Olympic FC extend their lead over the chasing clubs to 10 points. Strikers tilt just with their noses in front due to their superior goal difference. An impressive 47 goals to the Strikers, whilst equally impressive is the nine goals only conceded by Olympic. Redland City Devils move into third place with their win in Mackay, while Sunshine Coast to fourth, finally with their season on track. Losses to both NQ Razorbacks and the Queensland Academy of Sport see them both drop out of the four, only on goal difference. With Logan just two points behind, there is only four points separating those five teams. FNQ Bulls are still inconsistent on the field, but are still in the frame for a top four spot in their first season, just two points further adrift. Capricorn Cougars drop back to ninth, and with Sunday Minus and Bundaberg Spirit are considerable way behind. A full round of action in the Hyundai Queensland State League this weekend, with round 14 getting underway, with four Saturday matches. The first between the Whitsunday Miners and Olympic FC in Mackay, 6pm at Harrop Park. 
Bundaberg Spirit will be hoping to secure some points when they make the long trip south by bus to the Cleveland Showgrounds to take on Redland City Devils at 6pm. Should be a great matchup on the Sunshine Coast when the home side welcome FNQ Bulls to Stockland Park for a 3pm kickoff. Two very experienced coaches in George Cowie and Peter Takizi to meet there with a chance to secure bragging rights. Logan United take on table-topping Brisbane strikers at the Clem Jones Fields in Logan Sunday afternoon 4pm in a match that neither side will want to drop any points. Should be an interesting meeting there in Logan City. And the Queensland Academy of Sport face Capricorn Cougars in a rare Saturday afternoon match for the young side. 2pm kickoff for those two sides at Lions Stadium at Richlands. The NQ Razorbacks have the bye. Thanks for joining us on the Hyundai Queensland State League Highlights Show. We look forward to bringing you some more action next week.